Okay, good morning from the sixth floor here in Ezerum. It's like a nice sunny day. But, um, but two things to do today. First thing is to get some breakfast, if there is any breakfast in the hotel I've just been thinking about, maybe not. And the second thing is to get visas for these two Danish people. And, um, and today we have been in the bed a little bit a long time because we were very tired yesterday. Yeah, now we'll go back to the embassy after breakfast, see if they're open this morning, and then uh, try and pick up the visas, if that's possible. We'll see. Okay, now we're off once again to the Iranian consulate, see if they're open. Attempt number two. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see if we uh, succeed today. One thing we have learned here on this trip, that you can't trust signs anywhere. <laughs> Even though it says this hotel, it might not be a hotel. It says this restaurant. Might not be. The Cessna's coming side might not be. If you're outside the embassy, Cessna open at these hours, they might not be. <laughs> That's just the way you don't trust any signs. Right, just yep. go with the flow. Okay, look what these two have here. Now I want to watch how it is, this visa to Iran, you can see it here. We were not sure whether we were going to get them today because it was a little bit more trouble than we actually anticipated. But uh, we managed to do it. Yes. So, well, first of all we turned up, we just thought that uh, we could give them the um, application number that we have on the iPhone. But that wasn't enough, they actually needed the printed out um, copy of the application form. So. Yeah, we don't have a printer on our bike, so we had to run all the way back to the hotel, uh, get the files, ask if they could print them at the hotel. They could, but the ink ran out, ran out of the printer, and he put the paper in all crooked, so I thought that's never going to be accepted. So we ran all the way back up here with a little USB key with the files on, <laughs> found a Canon Photoshop. They actually printed them out pretty quickly for free, that was nice. Back to the, um, back to the consulate, waiting in the queue again. Nobody was there, then somebody came, then somebody guy told us we've got to go to the bank and pay some money. <laughs> he, gave, he gave us a receipt we needed to take to the bank and then mm. pay the price there. So we ran to the bank, we thought he closed at half past 11, so we ran all the way down there, quickly paid the money, that was okay. Ran all the way back at 20 past 11, nobody at all whatsoever in the consulate. We're just waiting and waiting, <laughs> waiting, nothing's happening. And we think, oh no, they're about to close. And then but they didn't close at half past 11. Then 12 o'clock, somebody appeared. I handed, gave him all the photographs and the payment and everything. <laughs> Just, he says, wait. So we thought, hmm, no idea what's happening now. We'll be waiting and waiting and waiting. What time is it now? I don't know, one o'clock. <laughs> came out with two nicely stamped passports. <laughs> so, Yay! <laughs> so, okay. And we were very lucky that we turned up today because we spoke to some people from Ukraine uh, that had been already here in this town a week waiting for their visas and couldn't get explanation why they couldn't get them. And then they said it was closed yesterday, the consulate, and the consulate closed tomorrow, and then it's closed Saturday and Sunday, so we were really lucky to get them today. Mm, yeah, we expected them to close at any minute and say come back on Monday, because tomorrow is Friday, that's bank holiday. <laughs> so, oh, I yeah. We've been lucky. How oh, well. old? Yeah, maybe next time we'll turn up with printed out pieces of paper in this, uh, this part of the and world. A, and allow a few days for it. And allow a few days for it, yeah, even yeah. though we thought it was easy. Even yeah. though all the preparation has been done with a little invitation on that, but it's not just to pick it up apparently. No, so. But, yeah, we got them. We got them. Two, so, so just one to go. One to go. My, we have to pick oh. mine up in Armenia, yeah. in Yerevan, so. <laughs> We asked him if we could pick mine up here, but we couldn't. We have to pick it up wherever applied, so that's okay. That was the original plan, so. Yeah, all right. So now we have to do a bit of biking tomorrow, get to uh, Georgia, Armenia, get mine in Yerevan. Then, to, but we've got time for that now, so. Okay, that was the main job here in Ezerum. Now we'll see if we can do a little bit of sightseeing, maybe. But, uh, very good. I never thought that would happen today. <laughs> This is having some extra passport pictures taken. Okay, we're out of the hotel. We spent all afternoon resting in the hotel. We all felt a bit worn that was out. Fantastic, we've never done that before on this trip. Yeah, we felt a bit Just tired and worn out, all of us. So. So after all the running around and the getting the visa, just having a rest. But now we're outside now. We do a little bit of sightseeing, and then we're going to have dinner again. 
find a place where there's some twin minarets and uh, an old madrasa, but one of the most important things to see in Israel. So we're going to have a look at that now. So even though at 1,800 meters altitude, actually quite nice and warm today. Didn't expect that. We was told that it was uh, quite cold here in Israel, but now it's actually quite nice at the moment. I need to find a bench to sit on here. All taken, maybe. <laughs> This is the twin minaret madrasa here in Israel. It's supposed to be one of the main icons of the city. You should see when you're here. Madrasa, which is basically a school of Islamic teaching. Um, so, uh, should I walk up here? Have a look at this. Built in the late 13th century. It's got some of the same wonderful architecture we've seen on the other Silk Road caravanserai that we've seen different places now amazing architecture go and see if I can have a look inside maybe wow extremely impressive space Okay, it was actually closed, but uh, a guy let me in anyway and showed me around. It was uh, quite interesting. So, uh, yeah, again, Turkish people are extremely kind. At the, it's getting into a bit of a problem because now, whenever we um, if we pull off on the side of the road just to uh, stop and look at the map, we just within. 20, 30 seconds, we're just surrounded by people trying to help us. <laughs> and sometimes we don't need any help, we just need to look at the map and maybe uh, talk together just to quickly decide do we carry on or do we stop on the bikes. But uh, yeah, Turkish people, they like to help, I've seen, so uh, that's nice. To be in a country with so many helpful people. But, uh, you know, I think we'll uh, go back and find Jamie's. Uh, Stomach isn't too good this afternoon, so he's just having a rest. So I've just come here on my own. But uh, now we'll go back and see if we can find something to eat. But, uh, we're still in the month of Ramadan, so it'll be the same as yesterday evening. Restaurant full of people. But, um, Ramadan is not just about uh, fasting, it's also about a time where they spend a lot of time praying, but also a time of charity. So, uh, what's some of the three pillars of Islam? Well, there's five pillars, but three of them is what they focus on during Ramadan. So we're uh, fasting, charity and praying. So I'll go back and find the others now and uh, see if we can find something to eat. Important for Muslims to be clean when they uh, go to prayer. So you can see there are always places they can wash themselves before they go in for prayer. In olden times the uh, they used to climb the minaret five times a day to call to prayer. And now you can see they're all fitted with, uh, well most of them we've seen are fitted with speakers. With the aid of modern technology, I think it works with a CD or tape recorder. So, okay, let's go back and find where Jamie's doing. You can see he's got some friends again, once again. <laughs> so, let's go and see how he's doing. Yeah, they're all setting up ready for tea and uh, the fast is finished for today. It'll be time for eating and drinking. Drinking tea, not alcohol. Tim and I was just sitting in the park where you wanted to come back. An experience we had there. And Tim was talking to some young boys that was roller skating, so that was quite nice. But then a man came walking past me and I just said, hello, just to be friendly like they are here. And he was smiling at me. Then ten minutes later, then he comes back to me with an ice cream. <laughs> and then ten minutes after that, he comes back with a box of cakes for me. Turkish cakes and water. So it feels somewhere. <laughs> so there was a man making a. So now I think. Oh, okay. Now Andrew can come back down. <laughs> Very good. So that was an experience again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sit in the park on your own for 10 and minutes. And then we 
started attracting a lot of attention. And then people came over and asked if we were tourists and where we came from and I don't know what. So, yeah, so that was the story of the park. So, this was the end of our stay here in Ezerum. You can see this is the street of hotels. This is hotel, 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 hotel. See hotel. the wet sky? Yeah, and the wet sky down the bottom has just been a huge thunderstorm here while we've been having dinner. We got what we came for. We came to collect two visas. That's what we did. Next time we go to a visa place, we will print out the piece of paper to take <laughs> with us. Yes. Even though we filled in an electronic application, I think we live in a world of uh, electronics. We still need to print out a piece of paper to go to the Iran embassy. We know we know that. So next time when I have to go to Armenia to get mine, we will take a piece of paper with us. <laughs> Apart from that, it was pretty straightforward. So and we got the stamps in the v in the passport. So. Yeah. And That's we we hope we can go tomorrow because today I have a little bit bad stomach, but yeah, we hope it will be better. He's probably tomorrow. dehydrated yeah. again like yeah. last time. And then mm. silly. Yeah. So. If we get going again tomorrow, if Jamie's okay, we've got four days, four or five days on the road, and then we should be at the border of Georgia. We just checked on the map today. It's downhill for 150 kilometers, so that's always nice. <laughs> so, then we have a one uphill of about 13 kilometers, and then it's downhill again to the border. So that's not too bad. Good. And about 230 kilometers, I think, to the border. So now we're on the final stage of Turkey. Yes, so. now we also need to change country. Yeah, now we're ready nice to here, but now we need to ready to for a change. Yeah. So, and that's where we're going then. Yes. Okay, that's it. We will uh, see you tomorrow, hopefully on the bikes, if Jamie's okay. Oh, okay, good night. <laughs>